Now tuning in to Earbud Media. Audio for everyone. I guess I have also made the choice to record. <laughs> Is it me, though, is the thing? Yeah, I'd like to talk a little bit about this new woman. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. Oh, uh, but I, I feel really... like you, you have to a little bit. Hello, <laughs> my name is... <laughs> uh, my name is now Roxanne. <laughs> um, I encompass the body that was once Allie. I'm 57. <laughs> I'm starting a new chapter of my life this spring. <laughs> I am also here, so it's a really interesting dynamic that we have yeah, this week. it's gonna be great. But yeah, folks, hi, welcome to Into the Twilight, um, <laughs> aka welcome to Into the Chainsmokers, TM, TM, TM. Because <laughs> I am so sick, yeah. and it's funny but it's also gonna be like this trust me hey hey listen like <laughs> listen but please don't we have a lot of funny stuff coming up <laughs> uh, <laughs> i don't want my voice so, to deter the comedy you're about to hear so just um you know it's roxanne you know yeah just just, just let it be yeah do you ever watch roxanne um what <laughs> oh you mean roseanne <laughs> yeah that's what i meant <laughs> fuck hey listen <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm like, I remember the song Roxanne, where it's just this this whiny dude just screaming about a stripper and how she shouldn't oh, shit. shouldn't have to do with that or a sex worker, I guess. There's this show called Roseanne, which is totally different. I'm glad that when we decided on who my sick name was, we decided on Roxanne and not Roseanne, because yeah, I feel like that. Was, yeah, I never watched that show. Was what I was trying to say. Wow, well, it's a good show, and it's back now. It's on that reunion or whatever. So. Now's the That's time. so weird. Yeah. I mean, we'll see, right? Yeah, we'll figure it out. Um, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of shows. But, yeah. More importantly, Cody, how are you doing? I am great. I am not plagued by your sickness. At least to I be mean, determined. You start coughing. Right. You know, by the end of this episode, we might... That might be a different story, but... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my voice just turns like worse and worse as this goes on. Yeah, you guys hear poor quality, but what I am emitting <laughs> is sexy voice, so... <laughs> I think you just need to readjust your expectations. That's true, yeah. You gotta reframe your mind yeah, right exactly. now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad that at least someone is in a healthy space. Because that's <laughs> honestly all I've ever wanted is just to not have cough drops and Kleenex and Vicks Vapor Rub <laughs> next to me for always. Because... They're not helping, so no. it's fine. Um, you know what is helping, though? What, man? Um, is getting constant reminders of the fact that I live in the hometown where Twilight was filmed. Yeah, um, sure. And it brings me strength and <laughs> energy um, in these dark, dark times. Sure, yeah. And I'm very pleased and also shocked to announce that someone very close to me mm-hmm. in my life has been hiding <laughs> and a very important secret about their experiences with the Twilight Saga. Sure. And I only recently found out about them about 24 hours ago. <laughs> so I'm still grappling with them personally. Sure. <clears throat> but I found out that, you know, of course, Twilight was filmed all over the Portland area, but one of the cities that it was filmed in um, was St. Helens, which is like a half hour away from downtown Portland, um, where my I almost instinctually I was almost like my wife um, my, uh, yeah you know what fuck it um my where my my boyfriend grew up and what I found out during the fact that he just suddenly brought this up after all of this time which like first of all rude was that so do you remember in the Twilight movie way back when when we watched it yeah, um when Edward was playing the piano for Bella Oh, yeah. So that was filmed in the St. Helens High School cafeteria. Okay. And so I got a hot take about this, is that in that cafeteria, there is like a 1990s-style 
mural of like a huge ass lion Whoa. that's in that cafeteria that's like apparently just out of frame. <laughs> and so just keep in mind that whenever you watch that, Edward is not only playing the piano for Bella, but also this huge ass lion that's like just right out of that blue blue frame sure so um i thought that that was really important and also apparently they filmed the port angeles fucking car chase scene at like one of the elementary schools so i was just getting lots of hot takes about st helens and not only it's halloween town past hey and continued (laughs) history but also its experiences with twilight which i thought was really important to me no i love that yes Um, The fact that this is just now coming out of the woodwork, it's been a decade and people are just now telling me their stories, as if we aren't all connected to Twilight in some way, is honestly disrespectful. Like, uh, that's all I want. I don't want you to, like, you should either introduce yourself to me being like, here's my favorite vine, or (laughs) here's how I'm connected to Twilight, if not both at the same time. Right, yeah, preferably. (laughs) So disrespectful. Yeah. But it's important regardless, I would say. Could you do me the honor of telling me about some of the current events for this week? Hell so yeah. that folks can hear your voice for a hot minute? <laughs> and not this beautiful rock sand that we've got here today. <laughs> we got an L article. We do. Um, about Kristen Stewart reuniting with now adult woman who played Renesmee. <laughs> They look so much alike. Well, she's she's a teenager. That was she's seventeen, but still, yes, they do look very similar, which is buck wild. Mackenzie, Mackenzie Foy, her name. If yes. she had like a darker, smoky makeup look and like a red lip, they'd look exactly the same. <laughs> I know. Yeah, they. Their it's face is amazing. The I love them both so much. Yeah. But yeah, she does not look seventeen. <laughs> but yes, I adore them, and I'm glad that they got to see each other. Yeah. At this Chanel event. Oh, and they both just have look these looks, looks upon looks. I know, I know. Kesu looks fucking gorgeous. She's got this matching cardigan and skirt going on, and also like these shoes that are like heels, but also like they look like Victorian, like pointed shoes yeah they're like oxford heels like they're right. super cool and these cool socks Ugh. yes i love it a, a dream. lot and Mackenzie foy looks like you're i don't know something straight out of j2 she looks like she just stepped off the set of pretty little liars like seriously <laughs> like preppy to the max it looks so right. good yeah it's a dream and a half yeah i love them both so much the the thing that i thought was super annoying about all of the articles i saw about those two was like where's our pats and it's like yeah. stop <laughs> as if you would get invited to, one of these to chanel please right come on get out of here okay so we have two other options that i'm personally curious about your opinions on is this relationship article that tells us to ditch bad habits for the spring and it's related to twilight folks i promise it's not just (laughs) our agenda we'll get there the other one is jessica jones (laughs) so spin the wheel um well i feel like if you do the jessica jones one you have to talk (laughs) because i have nothing yeah so really let's do this relationship article first all right let's do it Great. There's Uh, a lot of gifts. Oh, yeah. What I'd love you to do, Cody, is I want you to... Do you see that horrible Ross gif? (sighs) Uh, So that's... That image. uh, That's the section where Edward Cullen and Bella Swan are brought up. That's true. All right. So this this whole list is like, oh, man, things that you should, like, stop doing in a relationship. Here's... And this headline is expressing your feelings passive-aggressively, which... I mean, valid in terms of our, our two friends. You're not wrong. Yeah, not wrong at all. So one graph is like, the problem with passive gr- passive aggression, which I don't think anyone's ever used to describe passive aggressiveness, is that it forces your partner to try to read your mind. And like, even Edward Cullen couldn't read Bella's mind, you guys. Which, like, fair, sure. But also, <sighs> you dare to bring them up in an article about three bad habits in a relationship and that's all they get? But then, yeah, <laughs> you, it could just be 17 bad habits in a relationship as described by <laughs> segments of the Twilight Saga. And yeah, like, literally bringing up past relationships. Hi, Tanya. Let's talk about it. Flirting with other people and the passive aggressiveness. So it's like, yikes, y'all. Sure. And all of these are just kind of like... <sighs> 
I don't know how I feel about this whole piece. Because it's like, man, you should talk about, like, your past and, like, people you dated. Which, like, I mean, sure. But also, like, fuck you. Do whatever you want, you know? Yeah, exactly. It evokes good communication and, like, it's a part of your past or whatever. And then it's like, don't flirt with other people. And it's like, sure, if you're in a very committed monogamous relationship, totally. Boundaries set, for sure. This whole thing needs, like, a ton of asterisks. It's just, like, it's so, like, 2007. Seriously. I feel like we're not not there anymore. Thank God. Yeah, thank God. But yeah, I just thought that that was weird that it showed up in our Daily Digest, and I was like, why? And then... (laughs) Excuse me? Of course. Of course. It was because they were there. So this last one is a Vice article talking about Jessica Jones season two, which, hi, I'm so excited to... (laughs) like not talk at all for the rest of this weekend and just watch that (laughs) as I do work. But one of the things that I always have to talk about with Jessica Jones, especially on this podcast, is that the showrunner is the same screenwriter as all of the Twilight movies, Melissa Rosen. Oh yeah. Clank clank bitch. Which like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's crazy. Like we have one example of like, I don't know, a world being done right. Right. And then Melissa Rosenberg goes and fucking does a Twilight Saga still. Yeah. Discuss. <laughs> yeah, <what? laughs> like, yeah, I feel like it's a good example of, like, she got out, though, right? <laughs> she's honestly, like, oh, man, she's doing it. Yeah. Because, like, I, I believe that she's talented, especially, you know, post-Jessica Jones. Like, that's obviously a very um, involved and very well-done series. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I feel like there's some things in it that I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, like, a, a Rosenberg TM. Um, it's a TM, too. But, um, yeah, it's definitely, like, more of a glow-up for Melissa than anything else. God bless. You know what I mean? Yeah, she deserves it. Yeah. Chase your bliss. We do have a couple of questions this week that I would love for you to read, Cody. (laughs) (laughs) The first one is incredibly important. Yes, it is. So I need everyone to buckle up and really think about this. Don't fuck around. (laughs) Hey, I know that you're trying not to listen to this right now. I'm sorry. (laughs) I know you're plugging your ears right now, but this is important. So the question is, can vampires get high? If so, what happens to them? Does their brain just slow down to normal human speed? I have questions. Where are the stoner vampires? I love this. And you know what? I also have questions. <laughs> I would love to hear your theories about this. All of them go, please. Uh, well, I feel like we haven't really, like, nailed down how if vampires are affected by, like, substances, right? Like, can vampires get drunk? Yes. Can I don't know. Can vampires get high? All very related and similar questions. I feel like they have to be influenced at some level. I don't know if it's like, yeah, they just have to like drink a lot or they have to like smoke a lot for something to affect them or that just like affects them minorly. Right. But I feel like, I feel like Jasper's gotten high before, right? Like, you know, they got, he had to have, right? Well, I mean, if they have blood in them of some right. sort, sure. right? That's yeah. gotta be, right. it's gotta be impacted by that, That's right? That's science. That's science. So. Now, hey guys, question. welcome to Science Corner. <laughs> welcome yes. to Science Corner. Um, do vampires vape? Now you're asking the final <laughs> important questions as we wrap up this talk. Listen, I've I've had questions kind of brewing, and I've it's now. When else are we going to be able to? Now, say, you know, a kind of a follow up related question: Aren't sure, some sure. vampires the ultimate vape? Because you think about Benjamin, he can control the elements. Isn't he always just ripping that sweet cotton? Uh, hey. He can just make the clouds. I, Didn't you want to hear Roxanne say ripping that sweet I, cotton? <laughs> it's a lot more powerful than when I say it, that's for sure. Absolutely. She's got an authority that you really don't, <laughs> don't have. It's, you're not wrong. Wow. I mean, yeah, he does quite literally make clouds. So I guess, yeah, I guess Benjamin vapes. Now think about it because... If all of them were going to vape, Emmett would vape. Sure, yes. Now, what would his flavor, TM, oh, be? Stop. I'm saying that as if I know literally anything Any, about yeah, vapes. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> I, honestly, if you put, like, a color and, like, maybe, like, a fruity-sounding name together, you'll get, like, a vape. Cool punch. Or, like, <laughs> oh, my God. Or, or, like, twisted tango. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Those are all probably vape <laughs> flavors, right? TM, TM. Here's what I'm thinking. Sure. I'm thinking Emmett either rips cotton candy. Uh huh, sure. Or blue raspberry. Okay. Because he's a complex individual. 
who's also a child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, are those exactly complex flavors? I don't really feel... No, but I feel like he would get very excited about anything blue raspberry. That's fair. Like um, but they can't vape in the house because Esme is very strong about her furniture. Yeah, of course not. Aren't. Yeah. And it and Jasper like hotbox in Edward's car and then he gets in there and he's like, what the fuck, guys? Hey, guys, ugh, every time you always do this. Uh, <laughs> I just want to drive my wife around. <laughs> Have a good time. You guys are embarrassing Edward's me. Edward's fucking, what is that, straight edge? Those like the triple X's or oh, whatever. Yeah. And so he gets like really upset whenever he smells sure. weed. Oh, but like. Bella smokes a lot of weed, right? I know. <laughs> and that's the thing. That's well, the thing yeah. that he doesn't know because he can't read her mind. And so Bella's yeah. like always in the back seat, <laughs> fucking 70s show style. Right. When they're like hotboxing in his car. And then he only gets pissed at Jasper and Emmett. Yeah. And they gladly take the blame as Bella's just like, what? Yeah. That's... Bella would never. Of course not. No, no, no never. Yeah. Also, she's know. very stressed. She's self medicating her several anxiety and depressive disorders. It's fucking and that's true. fine. That's she, that's her truth. And, you know, they live in the PNW, like at this yeah. point, whatever. Right. Oh, yeah. She's, got, uh, she's, she's doing it legally. Come on. I mean, you think I'm trying to insinuate? Come on. <laughs> Get out of here. We got some in quiz that I feel like is super important. <laughs> it seems very important. Can you describe what it is and what these photos are, please? Because I don't think I can do it without wheezing. But of course. Thank you. Um, so, <laughs> so this is a BuzzFeed quiz, or Light Our Love, um, yes. called Which Non-Essential Twilight Character Are You? Mood. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a huge mood. Um, and there's a photo of fucking freak show baby Renesmee. <laughs> 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 and other vampire dude who I've forgotten his name Marcus. already. Marcus. Wow. <laughs> With that sick widow's peak and that just ho- these horrible face lines going on. <laughs> Here's the fucked up thing about this photo. They yeah. look like they're imprinting on each other. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I'm just saying. No. Stop this. Look at that smolder. No. <laughs> I'm talking about Renesmee. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Where does my does have a serious smolder about her, huh? Uh, she is literally on fire. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this it, thing is only four it's questions. It's a quickie. Yeah, it's a quickie. Yeah, I promise. So the uh, first question is Team Jacob or Team Edward? Well, but- <laughs> there's a lot of excellent answers here that are not Jacob Edward. Yes. One being who? Yep. The other being Can I Be Team Bella? The other being More to Daddy Carl, TBH? Very valid. And then also baseball. <laughs> yep, we got a sneak peek of Rhea Butcher here. How do I pick between Carlisle and Bella? Um, I'm doing more in a daddy Carlisle. Yeah, I feel like I gotta pay respects. If Charlie was on here. Fuck. It's all it's over for you, bitches. More in the daddy Charlie, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. What do you look for in a partner? Baseball. I feel like I'm sensing Same. a theme here. Werewolf 20 years older than you. Gross. Gross. Um, tasty blood. I think that's Roxanne's answer. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, what if that's the fucking switch, right? Roxanne, like, is totally fine talking about blood. (laughs) Yep, this is my life and death character, folks. Yeah, fuck, honestly. Um, How fitting, really. (laughs) I'm very intrigued by the one that says someone who knows how to drive a stick with a winky emoticon. I did that (laughs) one. So. I was sold by the winky face. Yeah, that was very evocative. (laughs) I hope we don't get the same answer. <laughs> I know. I'm going to, I think we're definitely going to be choosing gonna, different ones. We're definitely going to switch it up here. Yeah. Okay. So this one is pick your favorite shirtless Jacob pick, which like, oh, thank God. you for making this quiz for me. Thank you so much. Um, I, <laughs> do you want to let them know which one you chose? <laughs> I mean, I'm probably going to pick the baseball one, right? <laughs> Fair. Because it's just, listen, I don't care about this man or his pecs. <laughs> also, yep. the second photo, he looks so scared. <laughs> he does. He like, you're not like, oh, wow, this is a sexy photo. It's like, man, what a concerned, constipated boy over here. Yep, exactly. Can someone please lead him to the restroom? Ugh. But someone uh, really just photoshopped his fucking abs on the baseball. And honestly, and thank so God. good. God bless. Here's the thing about shirtless photos of anybody. Um, uh-huh. I'm terrified of belly buttons. And <laughs> so this is like a little bit much. Just like Yeah, staring. this is kind of your hell right now. Um, I just don't trust good- them, so, <laughs> but I'm going to do the eclipse one, I guess. How do you get to work in the morning? <laughs> and there's, you know, some typical transportation options for sure. And there's boat, in parentheses, I'm a fisherman. So My good. My mom carries me. Uh, scooter, which is 
I feel like how you ball out. Yeah. Um, and then also baseball. <laughs> I love the one that's like by whatever means possible because right. Like, Jesus. However, I get there. <laughs> I get there. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I'm a fan of the scooter, to be honest. I chose car, and I'm so excited to tell you what I got. Oh, please tell me. I got Bella's truck. Oh, fuck yeah. (laughs) I got the thing, folks. Um, And I am the thing right now. So I'm so proud of you. um, The description is, liking trucks is so cool. You're not like the other girls. (laughs) Which sounds exactly like the Victoria description I got before, which is fucked up. Yeah, it's a BuzzFeed conspiracy, my dude. I know. Okay, tell me yours. All right, I got the guy who was thinking about Cat in the restaurant. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. This is so accurate. Is, he needs no introduction. I mean, true. Hey. Fuck, this is a good quiz. <laughs> this is the perfect quiz. We can keep doing whatever, but I am going to take this quiz and just answer all the baseball answers real quick. Just no, I need that. What would happen? Do, 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 do. <laughs> I'm trying to do the me sounds. I'm trying to I... do it as fast as I can. Baseball. 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 Oh, if you, oh, you get Phil. <laughs> of course. No! <laughs> and his well, fucking soul patch. The description is just baseball. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it says you got mom's boyfriend in parentheses Phil. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. That's right. good, well, though. I feel like we learned a lot here. That was really important. Um, Cody. Yeah. Would you like to talk about life and death with me? Ah, fuck yeah, dude. Okay. So we're, we read the first half this week, which is, since this thing only has 24 chapters, it's just the first 12. Some background before we dive into this fucking mess. So this was published in October of 2015 for the 10-year anniversary Twilight, um, and it's set in that parallel universe. Do you mm-hmm. remember this coming out? Yes, very vividly. Okay, tell me everything. Well, I feel like, honestly, saying 2015 makes it seem like further away than it was, because I definitely, in my mind, was like, oh yeah, 2016, like, that was very recent. Okay, um, right? Like, I definitely right. thought it came out It seemed out like it happened yesterday. Um, but yeah, I remember, because like, I feel like I wasn't like really active in BookTube, but I was like still watching a lot of BookTube, and everyone lost their goddamn fucking minds because Twilight was like a very huge part of like oh, yeah. the book community on the internet. So that was fucking nonsense. I actually thought about buying it before no. the fever, this whole fever dream happened because I was like, at that point, I was like, I have never read it, and this seems like a cool pseudo feminist like maybe imagining or whatever. I didn't, I didn't do it, but um, obviously, <laughs> but I was very tempted at like a Target being like, huh. I have $16. Why not? You know, maybe. Maybe it's in the cards. Oh my god. Could you imagine if I had read that before this podcast? And that was your only, like, entryway into this Well, also, but the thing is, like, the the book has both in it, right? Oh yeah, that's true. So it has Twilight and it has whatever. So my theory, I guess, was to, like, I don't know, maybe read both, maybe just... Also, god damn, like, that must have been a thick fucking book if it was, like, too... Yeah, it was like 800 pages. God, ridiculous. It was a fucking religious tome. Yeah, I was never going to read that. <laughs> yeah, I I don't think it ever came out on its own. No, no. Um, It just came out in like the side pieces. Like when I had to buy this right. on Kindle, because uh-huh. when I first read it in 2015, I listened to the audiobook. Mm-hmm. And I had to like basically rebuy Twilight again. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Like, I, I, already, I already have copies. this. <laughs> yeah, you don't need this. Um, and I do yes. remember people, because people didn't know that it was happening, right? Like, people knew that there was going to be, like, probably a 10-year or something, right? We had like no new, idea. Right. Yeah. And so it was like, it made sense to, like, oh, maybe, like, a new packaging or, like, a new, maybe, editor's note or whatever, or, like, something. But that was it. But then she was like, no, here's, like, that. It also a whole other book. Here you go. Yep. It was wild. I remember losing my shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and listening to this audiobook in everywhere at work, at school, mm-hmm. I couldn't get enough of it. I was like, sure. I need to consume this as fast as possible because uh-huh. Twitter lost its mind. Right. And everybody was doing what they usually do, which is like taking photos and like live tweeting as they're reading. Sure. Um, which is one of my favorite things. But I was like, I need to know what's happening. Who are all these right. people? <laughs> Not realizing that, like, it was the same book, just different. Yeah, quite literally the same book. 
Yes. Well, and that's why we chose right to do this in a half way is because like we right. already know the content here, but everyone that we know is gone and different. Yeah. Speaking of which, so to prepare for this episode, I went on to the Twilight wiki and (laughs) which I venture to more than I often want to admit Um, (laughs) but I had to put the fucking character naming charts that they have on there onto our document because y'all this book trips me up sometimes so many people they're just fuck I mean obviously so like our two leads right Edith and E-D-Y-T-H-E. T-H-E. Fucking Beaufort. Get the fuck out of town. I just... I can't believe Bo Bice made an appearance in the Twilight oh Saga, God. you know what oh I mean? But, yes. I, I just, briefly, before we even get into the content of this, I wanted to know if there were some names that, like, really tripped you up when you were reading through this. Because there's some that make it a very difficult reading experience for me. Sure. Um, I, I didn't actually... I feel like I didn't notice a lot of, like, um, things that were confusing, mostly because I was listening to the audiobook and I was also very passively listening, because I was yeah. like, I know this, um, and I just kind of tuned out most of it, but I feel like the the names that I did notice were ones that I was like, I guessed beforehand, and then they end up, ended up being the names. Like, yes. when Mike Newton was coming up, I was like, oh, what are they going to do, Michaela? And they're like, oh, Michaela, and I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> God. And, like, Eric being Erica. I'm like, come on, guys. Can we... And they changed Tyler to Taylor. T- yeah. Um, like, whatever. But there's also some that are fucking off the grid. Right? right. For sure. And those are the ones that I am very interested in. Yeah. Um, particularly Rosalie. All of the vampire names, really. All of the vampire names are yeah. a lot. I have never been able to get over the fact that Rosalie's name in this is Royal Hale. <laughs> because, damn, that's a mood. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I'm a fan. Yeah, I mean, I think it's great. But also, just like, why? Yeah. I love that Alice's name is Archie, because yeah, why? So I love it. But there's also, like, Emmett to Eleanor, like... All right, Eleanor's sure. a fine name. Sure. But, like, why do you have to do Esme like that, though? Yeah. <laughs> like, my actual wife, the son of my life, you named Ernest. Ernest. <laughs> and, like, to be fair, right, she is right. Ernest. But, sure. like, shut up, Stephanie. Ernest. Stop it. Hey, shut up. Seriously. Um, And then, you know, they changed Jacob to to Julie, like Jules, um, yeah. which, I mean, fine, whatever, I guess. Uh, Lauren I, is Logan. Yeah, Jessica as Jeremy. Like, Yeah, fucking uh, Jeremy. Jeremy, stop it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, the only things, like, they, they kept a couple the same, like, a lot of the teachers, mm-hmm. like, Charlie, Renesmee, and Phil, they're all the same. Yeah. Right? Um, whatever. I just, the names always get me because, like, Jesus Christ. Why? (laughs) Okay, so. I do like how Sam was still Sam, but still, like, a different gender. That was fun. I was like, ooh, yes. Yep. Because technically, like, even though Paul is Paula in this, like, you could still go by Paul. Yeah. (laughs) And Sam is not like, oh, I'm Samantha. It's like, no, I'm still Sam. I'm still very much Sam. My name is Sam. My name is Sam. Sam, I am. Okay. (sighs) You think she said that? Yes. Hey. <laughs> That's how a deleted you not, scene. Though? That's a de- <laughs> What do you mean, how could I not? Quite easily. Well, I mean, all right. <laughs> Listen, Roxanne doesn't apologize. <laughs> so the content of this fucking Ugh. first half of this book. Ugh. I, I, I guess I'm, I'm curious about your thoughts, especially now that I know that like this was something that you were almost interested in at one point. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Like, you knew going into this, right, that this was going to be, like, reimagined. Right, But I guess I'm just curious, like, did it live up to the low (laughs) expectations that you had, I guess? I... I remember the big kind of, like, debate about this was, like, wow. Well, and this... And and she, um, talks about it a lot in, like, the introduction, right? Because she, like, has this whole editor's note being, like, this is why I did this. And, like, this is my method and everything. And she was, like, 
she did all this fake math in the beginning. <laughs> she noted it was fake math. And it was, like, only 5% of, like, the plot was, like, changed because, like, they were different genders. Or, like, everyone in the book genders were yep. flipped. And then, like, 70% was, like, me doing it just because I wanted to rework stuff that, like, had always bugged me in, like, the 10 years of this being a thing. Which, like, sure. Um, but I feel like there are clear... It wasn't just, like, an easy swap, you know what I mean? Like, there are obviously differences in the characters and how she chose to write them and oh, portray yeah. them. It's not just like a, oh, wow, these are totally... this It's the same story. You're still a damsel or whatever, just, like... You're a dude. Whoa. Revolutionary. It's like, no, I feel like you're still... Like, what I noticed with, with Bo is that, like, he wasn't nearly as, like, self-conscious and anxious as Bella was. Oh, yeah. Like, even a little bit. Like, I feel like in the beginning, we see a lot of him being like, oh, man, I'm not like other guys, whatever. Or, like, I'm not, like, a sporty guy. I'm just kind of, like, here, like, I, whatever. But a lot of that just had to do with him being, like, in a new environment and with new people that he didn't really know. Bella's anxiety was, like, constant and throughout. And, like, being inside of her head, it was, like, all-consuming, right? Yeah, exactly. Where Bella was just kind of like, man, I'm a little awkward, huh? And that was kind of it. Which, like, goals. (laughs) Right, yeah. Um, Like, I wish that that was all the the time and effort that I put into thinking about myself. Right. Yeah, I... There's so much that she tries to pretend, like, isn't different. Right. But is actively different from this. Yeah. Um, And so I feel like, I don't know, I almost wish that she hadn't combined, like, she so desperately wanted to re-edit this 10 years later, right? Right. And so it's like, do that, fix all the minor changes that you wanted to do, and then Mm -hmm. play in this space. Because I felt like she was trying to do both. And it, I don't know, it created these weird dynamics and the characters I felt like didn't need to be there. I would say more about Bo, right? So we know like the whole premise of this book is the same as Twilight. Right. But I was curious about like, I don't know how you feel about Bo and (laughs) what we get in these first chapters, because I think the interactions between him and Edith Mm -hmm. are while structurally the same. Right. Are I don't know. They are different. Right. And so I was curious about how you feel about those. Well, I do think it's interesting about their dynamic, especially early on. It's like the fact that, you know, it's Bo chasing after this girl, right? And like Bo being like really um, enamored and also confused and also a little scared. <laughs> scared yeah. of this woman, right? <laughs> right. Whereas in like the messages that conveys when it's Bella and Edward is like a whole other thing. But like with Bo and Edith, it's like, wow, I'm just kind of like confused and also a little bit turned on and scared <laughs> because of this girl and um i do think it's cool to see her have like this hold on him right and have yeah. this like power over him um which edward clearly does over bella and again conveys a lot of different messages than the other way around exactly i think that there's something i don't know there's there's a couple of things that are kind of gross about the way that Bo initially assesses Edith, sure. right? Yeah. Like he is very obviously intimidated mm-hmm. by this woman. But he's like struggling to figure out what that means. Right. Because there's there's definitely a part where Stephanie goes into of being like right after Edith tells him that she's dangerous. And he's like, I mean maybe dangerous but not in the traditional sense because like you're shorter than me and right how could you possibly be dangerous right exactly but then he's also like but like when i think about it she does scare the shit out of me right (laughs) and so i don't know i feel like it's a lot of him trying to grapple with adjusting expectations not only in where he's living but also like oh everything is different now (laughs) Mm. um and So there's just a couple of things like that, though, where I was like, no, Edith is a tank. Respect her power. (laughs) Fuck yeah. I did think it was interesting also talking about Bo and his interactions with people is that when we see Bella being fawned over and stalked by like Mike Newton and by Eric and all these people, it is assumed to be like complimentary and it's assumed to like you're supposed to be with these guys, right? Because you're just kind of like, wow, they just want to, like, ask her out. And, like, they would just want to hang out and, like, be friends or whatever. Yeah. Obviously, when we talk about it, we're like, that's 
creepy and wrong and we don't like it. But like first reading, it's kind of just like, well, these boys just want to like go on, go to the dance or whatever. <laughs> right, exactly. But I feel like when you see Bo and you see um, his interactions um, with Erica and with Michaela, it's very much like, wow, these people are like really eager. And these people are, these girls are like so into me. And I'm like, I'm not into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, especially the characterization of Erica, right? Because, like, I mean, Eric, yes, was very, like, too much. But it was also kind of, like, endearing. Like, it was fun. Like, it was still just like, yeah, I'll let this play on. Whereas with Erica, it's like, wow, she's just really, like, won't let this go, huh? Like, she's just kind of like, mm, I don't really know how I feel about this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think the way that it comes off, um, even though it's, like, the exact same actions. Right, right. Is portrayed very differently because hi (laughs) yeah (laughs) and so I always thought that that was super interesting but I think it's also I don't know I think that there is in a way something refreshing because they're both Mm. like "Eh." (laughs) right Uh, people (laughs) which I think is relatable for a lot of folks right and I think that like having that with Bella for me was really relatable Uh um yeah, like, well, in theory, because I was like, attention, yes. Um, yes. <laughs> but I think her experiences were relatable, but also, like, a little too real. Mm-hmm. And so, for me, it was hard to kind of, like, take that lens off. Sure, um, yeah. Whereas reading this, I was like, oh, okay, I could see how, like, that would be, like, a lot. <laughs> right. And not just, like, seeing it through my own experiences there, I guess. <sighs> There's a couple of things, like, the... Um, the descriptions like in the cafeteria that I thought was really interesting because it's it's the same scene right of like all of the colon sitting at the cafeteria when Bo sees them for the first time mm-hmm. but I love that uh, like fucking Eleanor and Royal are like this absolute power couple yes um and they're both just like these tall tank athletic monsters I love it and I, yes, I also love it a lot. Um, and I also love that even, like, Royal still has, like, long, luscious hair. Um, yeah. Which you know, like, if it was done now, because the fact that he had a bun would be, like, the fucking, like, man bun. Of course, yeah. Undercut, shaved, whatever. Of course. Um, so, yes, I just, I loved that a lot. Especially because, like... Bo describes all the girls first, and he's like, I am so intimidated. (laughs) These are all so strong people. I guess I'm curious, right? So there's a couple of mentions, especially in the first half of this book, about OCD. Uh Uh-huh. And it's it's Stephanie, right? So, like, we have to keep that lens on there. But it's like, I don't know. I was kind of frustrated about this because I think Stephanie is trying to make this ploy that, like, Bo has OCD, uh-huh. but she's describing it very much in like a, a telling way and not like show me right. way, which would make it more realistic for a character, uh-huh. um, especially like, and that would, that would probably fit in with like the anxiety and stuff that we know about with like Bella before. Right. Um, it's, it's just like briefly mentioned a couple of times and then like not really described in any way. That just kind of, like, annoys me because it's a very, like, Stephanie thing to do. Yeah. To be like, I'm going to add in a dash of relatability here, I guess. Ding. Yeah. Yeah, because even in this um, this intro, right, where she's, like, talking about all the changes she made in, in this bad math. She's like, 5% of the changes were developed uh, because Bo's personality developed just slightly different than Bella's. The biggest variation are that he's, that he's more OCD. He's not nearly so flower with his words and thoughts. He's not as angry. He's totally missing the chip Bella carries around on her shoulder all the time. Yeah. Which I feel like... like... (laughs) And it's just like... She's just like popping this in and then not... It's just Actually showing it or giving any reason. Yeah, like she pops it in like what I think like layman's terms would be I guess or like what the standard definition of what people associate with OCD is of like oh cleaning and like I'm gonna clean this weekend I guess Charlie doesn't have the same OCD as I do and stuff like this but then like doesn't delve into like what that would look like in like a school setting right or like interacting with people as they're going on a trip so you know what I mean like places where that could actually be a little bit more natural 
Right. I guess. But yes, I just thought that that was worth mentioning. Should we talk about jewels? I would love that. Now tell me everything. I, I love jewels. I want to know your thoughts about that. I love jewels. Uh, I hate Jacob and I love jewels. I want I <laughs> love jewels with my whole heart. I love her. I know she's going to fucking disappoint me in the later in the later chapters, but right now she's pure and I love her. And she right now, makes cars. Team Jules. <laughs> team Jules. She makes cool cars and she's a cool gal who works on cars and knows about cars and she's cool and hip and I love her. And she's she deserves so the world. She's so strong. She's so very strong. <laughs> and Edith is so strong and so intimidating and it's just like I just imagine Bo like quaking in his <laughs> Doc Martens like, like uh, I'm just surrounded by all of these beautiful powerful people. Oh, um but yes, Jules is super cool and I obviously adore her of a lot. Course. So here's the thing, folks. In an unsurprising take, I don't like Michaela. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I also don't like the name Michaela. Sorry. Um, yeah. I've never met a Michaela I liked. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, Shots fired. And it's just the character, folks. Like, I just, like, I just rereading the blood scene and just, like, the character getting so defensive about anyone who would be able to take this like dying human to the nurse just because right. they want the notoriety of that oh god Ooh. just gets under my skin yes i god i can't believe like I, this book exists sometimes if i'm being <laughs> honest there were a few things that like it, I guess it's hard, right, with deja vu, because I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm reading the same book, but also, like, I'm literally reading the same book over again. Right. <laughs> and we just did this. But I don't know. I guess it's... It, I'm glad that we decided on doing this after Breaking Dawn. Right. Because it's almost refreshing to be like, remember when Charlie <laughs> was here? <laughs> you remember that? Remember when we got all these good Charlie takes? Oh. Um, but I do think it's interesting that, like, in this... Charlie and Bonnie are like supposed to be sort of like a thing. Right. Um and it's hey. like hey. hey. <laughs> yes. So I just I don't know. There's a lot in this. Yes. Um but the first the first half of this is mostly like the exact same. Sure. Yeah. Um there's not like too much there, but the second half of this gets like buck wild and like real fast and like completely changes which is weird yeah um but yes i i don't know i think one of the things that we should definitely talk about though um and we might need to delve into it more next week right is the the edith and bella and then Bo and edward ships that definitely exist in this sure. fandom and are very strong and very powerful interesting yeah I love that. Yes, I do too. <laughs> um, like, just imagining, I don't know, I just think that it's, it's a strong and an evocative image that the fandom is very powerful in their feelings about, and I agree. Yeah, um, I, I agree. I get it. I love it. So, yes, I think that that's, we, I just, I don't want people to think that, like, we're not talking. Right, yeah. Um, I feel like we'll definitely. It'll be much easier next week. Speaking of next week, um, we're going to finish Life and Death. Ow! So, look forward to that. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine, like, how people read books this fast all the time. Jesus, yeah. My brain was like, no! (laughs) I know. The only good thing was that, like, we've read it before. Yeah, thank God. It's familiar, but, like, not... You know, but not too not familiar. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> uh, we get we get a check. We have to we get an invoice from John Roderick. <laughs> He's like, "Hey, stop it! <laughs> <laughs> I need fifty thousand dollars right now." Jesus Christ. Okay, could you do me the honor of reading the review that we got on iTunes this week? Um, well, this review is from Doodlebug One Hundred One. Thank and, you. <laughs> Yeah, the the title got cut out, but it says nostalgia, and I bet it's great. Honestly, the idea of just, like, sometimes nostalgia with an ellipsis, yeah, it conveys a, a lot. That's a moon and a half. Yeah, so 
Thank you, Doodlebug. Thank you, Doodlebug. Um, that's <laughs> like so what I always pure. say. Thank you, Doodlebug. <laughs> <laughs> BRB, I'm calling everyone, calling all my bays Doodlebug from now on. Oh my on. god. <laughs> we're no longer um, Brocks, we're Doodlebugs. <laughs> no, actually, I think that how it works is you're either a Brock, <laughs> you're a Doodlebug, or you're a. Or a cryptid. <laughs> yes. No, fuck Amber. You're a cryptid. Yep. The three genders. The three genders. Brocks, doodlebugs, and cryptids. Yep. That's how it is. Sorry, yeah, folks. That's, that's just science. I don't make the rules. That's it. Yep. God did that. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Okay. So we have fantastic patrons who Ooh. paid a lot of money for this show to happen. And I'm Thank so God. sorry. I'm so sorry that we had to give you this. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but, like, my voice has not gotten better in a calendar week. So, like, I don't know what to tell you. What are we going to um, do, man? Why isn't your money paying to fix my, you know, with the health care? <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's talk about health care. Um, yeah, fuck. <laughs> so, I was thinking for our patrons this week, we could either have them be obscure characters from the Twilight Saga, or they could be their new life and death names. Ooh, I like that. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So, Rachel Black. Rachel Black. Um, thank you for your patronage. Thank you. Um, you are now Raunchy Black, right? <laughs> Is that how this works? What? What's the generator that oh. Stephanie used to create this? Oh, so we're making names about their names. Is yes. Is that what's happening? Okay. Yes. But if there's already a Rachel black you know what i mean so should we do adam black like is that the is that the move or do we make another name for specifically rachel black nope it's ron black nope it's (laughs) it's ron it's ronald black (laughs) that's how this works okay i've decided on stephanie meyer's algorithm i found it i figured it out i've done the math yes thank you jessica stanley a patron of ours who we love and adore also known as Jeremiah <laughs> Stanley. <laughs> Otherwise known as Flat Stanley. <laughs> Stop. Thank you to Katie Weber, otherwise known as Kyle Weber. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Weber. Thank you, Rachel Yorkie, the a God Among Men Seriously. at her patronage level. Thank you so much. Um, we've already done a Rachel. Um, thank you, Raymond. Oh my <laughs> everybody, god! Everybody loves Raymond Yorkie. Everyone, thank you so much for my time. I'm gonna welcome <laughs> up Raymond Yorkie. <laughs> he's a <laughs> he's a storm in the east, you know, he's a big old nor'easter, you know what I mean? Oh my god. He's really on the up and up, he's really making his, his debut here. Oh my god. Raymond Yorkie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you to Shannon Clearwater, otherwise known as <laughs> um, Shane. Shane, yes, Shane, Shane Clearwater. I almost said Seth, and then I was like, oh fuck, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, no, that was the whole point. <laughs> we did that. We did that already. We done. We done. Flip the ship. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you for putting up with this episode. Thank you so much. Shouts out. For always to Taylor Brown. A Brock uh, among Brocks. Um, Taylor Brock 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 <laughs> <laughs> Broxanne, stop <laughs> Broxanne <laughs> Why didn't we come up with that an hour ago? Hi everyone. We're not Broxanne funny. is almost done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tonka Brown. Nope. <laughs> um <laughs> what's that? What's a tea? <laughs> thank Fine. you tyler brown there we go thank you okay um who sent me this um fan fiction titled let the games begin okay. it was published in august of 2008 okay. and the description is bella joins the Collins for truth or dare except it's wow. not your ordinary truth and dare this is colin style how does edward get stuck in bella's truck with mike and jake and what's with alice and walmart clothes who will win who will chicken out so this is from chapter three, titled Excuse Me, um, which is the mood. So where were you guys last night? Hmm? I asked, staring at him. Uh, we went to an amusement park. He answered me uncomfortably. And what did you guys do at that amusement park? Rosalie accused, looking at the guys. Um, 
Well, we rode rides and crap, you know, like you usually do in an amusement park, Emmett said, looking at his feet, shifting from side to side. Okay, Alice said, somebody better start telling me what the hell happened last night before I make you all dress up as my new Barbies. Emmett got us kicked out, Jasper said, with a fearful look on his face. Alice's dress-up idea must have scared him badly. Jasper, Emmett yelled. Excuse me, Rosalie said, glaring at Emmett. Rose, I swear to God, it was nothing, Emmett said, backing up into the wall. Oh yeah, she said, to find nothing. I was just going to ride this ride, and the guy running it wouldn't let me on, but I really wanted to ride it, so when he started it, I just kind of snuck on, Emmett answered, with fear in his eyes. I see, she said, looking him straight in the eyes. And what might this ride be? Emmett gulped. Uh, Edward snickered before answering the carousel. And scene. Wow, I love that. It's pretty damn good. That was a good time. Thank you, Tyler Brown, for all the work you do. Yes. Thank you, Tyne and Brown. Oh, my God. Titus Brown. <laughs> fuck. Uh, fuck. As we say in Forks, Roxanne's got to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get bit. <laughs> This is an Earbud Media production. You can follow the network on Twitter at Earbud Media. You can also follow this show at Into the Twilight almost everywhere, or check out our Tumblr at intothetwilight.show. Our wonderful artwork is done by Maddie Padilla, who you can find at your Ghost Host 44 on Instagram. Our music is done by Eli Krause, who you can find at krausefilms.com. The intro and outro is done by KB underscore underscore Smith on Twitter. You can follow Allie at Into Wild Places, and you can follow me at Dyke Discourse. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye! You've been listening to Earbud Media Production. Earbud Media. Audio for everyone. Hey, Dan. Hey, what's up, John? I just wanted to uh, confirm that we were recording Monday. Yes. Uh, what are we recording for? Oh, it's our new podcast. Our podcast. The the, the Strange Little People one. Strange right? Little People, yeah. Yeah, the one on Earbud Media Productions. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. You can listen to it. The one that we update every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, dude. When we have new guests all the time. Sometimes. Sometimes. Most of the time. Yeah, and we talk about current events and stuff. People should listen to it, right? Yeah. yeah it's really cool. I think people would like it. Um, I mean, you don't have to, but I, mean, I hope you would. Did you put out the ad yet? The uh, flyers? Yeah, I, I'm doing it right now, as we speak. No, you're sitting down. You're no, not... no, this, this is happening right now, as we speak. John, why did my hand just go through you? Oh my god. John. We'll talk about it next week.